now we come to the mutual inductance <coughs> okay so we have a solenoid okay <coughs> so let there be a solenoid of length l okay of length l let there be two solenoids okay of length l okay r1 r2 is the radius of the solenoids obviously n1 n2 is the total number of turns of the solenoid turns of solenoid okay and r n1 small n1 and small n2 that becomes what what is n small n is equal to capital n upon l no number of turns per unit length okay so n1 n2 is the number of turns per unit length of the solenoids we have shown the smaller one to be to be as as solenoid number 1 and the bigger one as solenoid solenoid number 2 right so so this right now our aim is to find out the mutual inductance between the two solenoids get the point okay so i1 i2 be the current in the solenoids okay now what happens to calculate mutual inductance to calculate mutual mutual inductance what do we do we do this what is mutual inductance i put a current in one of the solenoids and i try to find out the flux linked by the other solenoid right Hmm? Why is there a current in both the solenoids? No, alternately. We'll have to put it alternately, right? So to calculate the mutual inductance, we first pass a current in solenoid one and try to find out find out the flux linked by solenoid 2 see uh, let there be uh, let there be no confusion it is not essential you will always have solenoids which will be linking okay it will not it, it is not always the case that that the solenoids are coaxial it is not always the case that they have the same length we are taking a very very special case of 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 two circuits of two circuits fine it could be two coils as well okay it could be two coils which could be oriented at say 1 120 degree you never know what it can be and it is not essential that it will be a circular coil but as you start becoming more random the the calculation start becoming more complex okay so this is a very special case where we have taken two solenoids same length coaxial okay and 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 we are trying to find out what will be the mutual inductance between the two now for that what i am doing in solenoid 1 and we are trying to find out the flux linked by solenoid 2 now let the current in solenoid 1 current in solenoid 1 b i 1 and let there be no current in 
solenoid two. Right? Let there be no current in solenoid two. Now try to understand what is the what is the field field obviously magnetic magnetic field in solenoid one in solenoid one is denoted by B one. It will be mu naught N one I one. It is mu naught n1 i1 <coughs> okay okay now so so you understand if i if i look at it from here you understand if i am looking at it from this side how does it look maybe the current is such that the field is coming towards me. So I see a bigger solenoid. I see a big solenoid. Correct? Circular. Within this, coaxial, the other solenoid. And say, say this has, okay, this has field like this. Is it not? You did the last one. Hmm? Yeah, due to the large one because because the small one is not carrying any current. <coughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. The the one is smaller one. So so sorry, sorry, sorry. So so, I'm sorry. So the smaller one, so the field will be like this. Right. Now, what is the flux linked by the bigger one? What is the flux linked by the bigger one? Flux linked by the bigger solenoid. Solenoid is equal to that is that is phi two, right? That is circuit number two. So phi two is equal to B one into A one, is it not? <coughs> Why? <coughs> B one multiplied by A one or A two? <coughs> what will it be? A one. Why? Because we do not have field in whole of A two. Though though A two is larger, but what is the trouble? The trouble is that there is field only. In area A1, we simply do not have a field in whole of A2, right? Yes, obviously. Obviously, A2 will, it would have been A2 had you, had there been a field all over. Is it not? But this is not the case. That's wrong. You understand? So, so you will be overestimating the flux. So it is B1 into A1. So that is mu naught N1 I1 into N, N. Let us try to understand. N, apart from that, what do we have? We have, we have phi 2. This is, this is for one turn. Is it not? This is linked by one turn. There are how many turns there? In, in, in circuit 2, there are n2 turns. n2, smaller than n2. No, bigger n2. This is an absolute number of turns, right? One turn links B1A1. There are total how many turns? N2 turns. So it will be capital N2. You use small n1 for finding this area. Don't get confused. Okay? For finding this field in a solenoid. Don't mix it with that. We have seen 
that our flux is equal to n times <coughs> b into a. We did, we did not say this is number of turns per unit length. Mm. It has to be number of turns. Mm. Fine. Because, because one links so much, so n2 links so much. Okay. So, so b1 is mu naught n1 i1 into pi r1 square. Is it not? Into now I can write N2 as N2 into L. No? It is N2 into L. So I get mu naught N1 N2 mu naught N1 N2 pi R1 square L I1. Phi 2 is that. We get the point? And what had we said? What is mutual inductance? Phi 2 upon I1. Right. So we are actually interested in this quantity. Phi 2 upon I1. And it will be what? What will it be? Flux into due to current in 1. M21. So M21 is equal to this. Is it not? No, you can put it or you can remove it. Depends on you. But as long as you understand this is N1 by L and N2 by L. So if I write capital N1, capital N2, then there will be an L square here and that L will cut and... No, you didn't get it. No, 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 no. Because, because, see, this is the total. This is, this is actually... Phi 2, phi 2, I should, I should have written it like that, you know. Phi 2 is that and N2 phi 2 is that. Is it not? You write like that. Then there will be no confusion. You have already taken that into account. So I have taken it, uh, uh, taken it into account there. So N2 phi 2 is equal to, uh, is equal to, this has been written as N n2 is equal to n2 into l right so so this is actually now i think you won't have any confusion right n2 phi 2 i have taken into account fine otherwise otherwise conventionally you would have been calling it straight away psi 2 okay psi 2 this this whole thing this is what is psi 2 so, so uh, in other ways, you always deal with this. This is actually psi 2. But maybe the CBSE book does not recognize, so don't do that. So, so M21 is equal to N2 phi 2 upon I1, which is mu naught N1 N2 pi R1 square L. This should be the value of the mutual inductance. pi r1 square l. We get the point. Hmm. Now we come to the other circuit. Now we come to the other circuit. So now let there be current in, in, in 2 and let, let the solenoid number one link the link the uh, link the flux. Let there be current I two in solenoid two and no current in solenoid one. Okay, and we try to find out the flux linked by solenoid one. Yes, you can do that. Yeah, uh, there'll be a by link by solenoid one. Yes, you do it. 
do it yourself maybe but let me let me be doing it for the sake of completeness okay so 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 what will be the magnetic field in solenoid 2 it is b2 is equal to mu not n2 i2 okay so flux linked by the smaller solenoid flux linked by one turn okay uh, you should be linked by let us make it linked by one turn of okay so one turn of the smaller solenoid will be how much phi 1 is equal to b 2 now see this hole has a field this hole has a field but my smaller solenoid is only linking this much so again it will be b2 into a1 only so n1 phi1 okay so the total flux linked right n1 phi1 is is n1 into b into into b2 into a1 which is n1 this is n1 l into b2 b2 is what mu naught n2 i2 into area 1 is what pi r1 square get the point so n1 phi 1 is equal to is equal to mu naught n1 n2 pi r1 square l into i2 correct so what will be what will be the mutual inductance mutual inductance due to the due to the 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 flux link by coil 1 due to current in coil 2 is what n1 phi 1 divided by i2 is it not and that gives me mu naught n1 n2 n1 n2 pi r1 square l correct this is what i get here i had got this here i had got this here i have got this hold on it is mu naught n1 n2 pi r1 square l okay so are they equal yes so i say m12 is equal to m21 and this always holds good okay the mutual inductance are equal fine we get the point okay